Okay, so this is the Several Cool Things demo. It's essentially a still life. And um, yeah, we just saw our setup there. You'll need an easel with uh, some sort of hard surface to draw on. I have foam core. And then your 11 by 14 sheet of paper. Um, you can tape that onto your hard surface. Um, and also keep in mind if you're a lefty, have the easel to the left of your still life. If you're a righty, have it to the right of your still life. So um, for making your still life, choose objects that you really like and have an emotional connection with. So uh, um, whales are one of my favorite animals. There's a crab puppet I made. There's a little sculpture, the yellow thing that my husband made. So I like everything and I'm excited to draw them. Um, so here are our materials. You'll need a um, pencil to start with. With that comes an eraser, a sharpener, um, you'll also need your tape. When you tape your drawing to your hard surface, make sure you lint it or just kind of put it on your t-shirt, your pants, so it's not as sticky, protects your artwork. And then um, you'll need um, a brush, a soft brush that's very clean to brush away any um, eraser bits, chewed up paper. And then um, for the final part of this drawing, you'll need felt tip pens that are black as well as markers. So there's the still life once more. And just begin with a gesture. So draw big, general, or simple shapes. Um, respond to what you see in front of you. Take note of the negative shapes or the empty areas as well. So I really was looking at that kind of that open center in my still life so there's the crab puppet and the ink bottle they have that sort of blade like shape that they're surrounding in the middle so um, I really I paid attention to that as far as getting the angles right for each of the puppets and toys in there um, and then as you um, kind of correct your gesture you could start refining the lines with pencil um, and while you're drawing, always look at your still life. Um, and there I, there I am again, just kind of refining the edges. So, um, yeah, I'm just using, you know, a little bit more pressure, being more confident about the line, even though I'm using pencil. And here I just added the drop shadow, so you see those vague shapes in the background. It adds a little bit more depth. Um, now on this slide, so once I really studied what was in front of me, refined the gesture, really figured out those edges, um, I started adding the, um, the pen. So I'm just using um, a felt tip pen with a similar width. And um, yeah, there's the pen drawing compared to the still life. Um, kept working on it and there you could see I erased, took away the pencil. And now um, this is an edited um, photograph of my drawing, so you don't see that uneven lighting. It's pure white wherever that you see the paper, and it's pure black wherever you see the pencil. Um, that's a nice thing about these drawings is that they um, photograph very well, and they're very easy to edit too. Um, we'll look at the still life in the drawing one more time. Now let's talk a bit about texture. There's my whale. There's the actual whale. Um, see all the dots? So we could show those dots through stippling. Um, there's the bottle. There's the actual bottle. See all the ridges on the bottle? So hatching would be a way to um, portray those ridges. There's the crab's arm. It's pretty hairy. There's a hairy texture. There's the crab's eyes. They're made out of denim. So you see all those ridges in the fabric? Hatching would also be a good way to show those ridges in the fabric. There's my husband's little sculpture. It's kind of soft and smooth. Stippling would be a good way to show that kind of soft, smooth texture. So now we'll talk about text. So this is some cologne, steel cologne. Um, see the whale's fins in front of it. But whenever you draw text, a good thing to do is to make a rectangle around the text and then you fit each of the letters within a like a block that you map out um, and I can it really rather than just writing directly um, which can kind of go haywire sometimes it just having that rectangle provides some control 
So let's look at this lid and the ridges on it. So to portray depth, so the ridges of the lid, they're not all the same distance from one another. When you see the edges, see how close they get? So that shows that this is cylindrical and it's receding in space. You can see this in the actual lid as well. So just, um, yeah, just showing you know, that it's round. Um, in this drawing where we zoom out, you see that there's a ridge in the plastic bottle. So I just made note of that. And it's also, it's a really nice um, cross contour. So it shows that kind of that round or hemispherical form there. So um, we'll check out that Factus Eraser logo. We'll use that um, rectangular technique. But it's pretty hard to write text from up to down. So um, I flipped over my drawing on its side. So I just write the text from left to right as I would with a you know, handwritten letter. So it just feels a little more natural. And you could do this if you ever feel uncomfortable while making a drawing. Just, just flip it. Um, there we go. And there it is at its proper angle or orientation. Okay, so now we'll fill in that drop shadow. I'm using a marker to do this. So um, in order to preserve those like fine lines and edges in the drawing, I made that like bold outline for the drop shadow shape. And then I'll go in after making that bold outline, fill it in um, with the marker. So I'm filling in that shape and this will take multiple layers. So if you look, you see it's kind of scratchy Up to the left, you see bits of paper. So I had to go back over those areas. So in this photo, I applied a second layer of marker. I went instead of left to right, I went up and down. There's a third layer. Um, so it seems redundant, but um, it does pay off to have the multiple layers of marker. You really saturate the paper with the ink and just get that rich, dark value. So now that we got the drop shadow, I'm going to go for the dark lid, the dark banana tip, the Factus logo, the whale. So um, I like to take on like a, an assembly line approach when drawing. So just hit all the similar elements at once when you're in the zone. I, I found it really helpful. Um, so we're looking up close at the whale. So you see I didn't just arbitrarily fill it in with scribbly marks, but I used those, that stippling technique once more. Um, you know, the end result, you may not see all that mark making, but it does change the surface and it is worth the effort to just really, you know, consider that texture. So we got all the dark objects. So now um, I'm gonna go for the middle tones, starting with that crab puppet. There's our still life, there's the drawing. So you see all these kind of squiggly marks in the felty areas in the crab. I'm starting to add that denim with the hatched line. And just kind of looking back and forth constantly, making sure the values are correct. But you see nothing's quite as dark as the shadow, as the whale. It's still, you have that optical mixing. It reads more of a like a gray. So I started adding textures for the wood. Um, and I didn't add like every single bit of wood grain in there. Um, using hatching for the green bottle. So it's smooth, it's pretty rigid. I'm using just those straight lines that are parallel to one another to kind of just mirror or mimic that texture. So now um, you can see I'm going into the outlines and the cross contours. So rather than having a uniform width, I'm making them get thicker as perhaps me like one of the crab legs is overlapping the other. So that outline will be thicker than the one beneath it to imply that depth. I also go inside the objects, those cross contours, maybe when the line's closer it's thicker, maybe as it's kind of moving towards the edge, receding, it gets thinner so there's less contrast. Um, and just that visually it becomes more interesting um, using different line weights and um, it also implies shadows in the crab's arms as well. Something else you may have noticed is that I um, went back in with the marker on the crab's, those black denim eyes that he has. Um, so before when they were just gray, it felt a little unbalanced, like all the that darker values were at the bottom where the whale is. So I wanted to bring some of those dark values and that contrast to the top with just kind of like getting that paper saturated with the marker's ink. And it also shows a difference in, um, 
you know, toned to the crabs white. His eyes are black, so I just made that a little more stark. So I always just, you know, go back, reassess your drawing, see how you can change it. So, um, yeah, I got, took a photo of my drawing. I cropped it so we don't see the, you know, the hard surface I drew it on anymore. Um, I use that application called Genius Scan. So it really ups the contrast, takes away any uneven lighting or visual noise. It makes a really crisp image that's great for um, sharing your work online. There it is. And this is complete. Thanks for watching.